We've chucked out the kitchen sink and brought in a workbench because here we're going to make something. All we've kept is the kitchen scales. And that's really what we're going to make, but not quite like this. This is a beautiful antique set of kitchen scales and some people still use those in the kitchen today. Others go for a more modern kind which have a spring inside and you put weights on top. Either way, you're not too popular if you come in and weigh bricks on them or sand or boat builder's glue. Because apart from the fact you can muck up the scales, you can also get grit in the food and you don't go down awfully well with the rest of the family. So what you really need is a pair of, or a set of rough scales that you can use outside for bolts and nuts and sand and boat builder's glue. And this is how you make them. Let's just put that to one side. You will have noticed that you can get scales that are simply spring driven. That's the sort you can hang up, you dangle bags or something like that from them, and as the spring stretches, you can read off on a scale the weight that you're dealing with. The problem is they're a bit expensive if you've only got a, a one-off job. But the sort you make works on the same kind of principle, because springs either stretch or compress depending on the sort of load that you add to them. And this is a press spring job, and the best kind of spring to use is this salvage from an old mattress or a, a chair that's falling apart, an upholstery spring. And it's very good because it's big on the ends and small in the middle, so it's stable. It doesn't fall over awfully easily when you put weights on it. However, it will fall over if you don't house it properly, and so you house it like this. You cut yourself a piece of plank, fairly thick plank, that is about as square as the end of the spring is round. See that? It just fits on there nicely means that the spring inside the housing, of which this is the end, is not going to rub on the sides, but it's not going to be able to rattle around inside either. So that's the base of the box. You'll need sides to the box that will be long and thin and tall. And make sure the sides are good thick timber. Ply is just too flexible, it'll flop about with the weight inside it. But you want them at least as tall as the spring. You need four of them, and you tack them on with nails to the base that I've already shown you. Let's show you what I mean. Put the base down like that. Put the side like this and use good long nails that are really going to bite on that base and built them in. If in doubt, use more nails. Turn it round and get the next side. And you'll need four of these sides to complete the box. Well, I could keep going and finish that off, but I've already done one, and here it is. You can see it's the same size inside as the spring, and it's got these four tall sides that go up there. And in fact, if I get my spring, here we are, slide it in there, you'll see it just fits neatly inside. And I could put more weights on top of that, but it's not terribly satisfactory, so I use another square of wood, something like that, although I've got an even thicker one, which is better, and I drop it in, in this sort of fashion. There it goes. And that's a platform that I can put my weights on. You'll notice that if I get it lined up properly, it slides up and down very easily. Well, let's shove it there and see what sort of effect we're going to get. If I put a one kilogram weight on it, here we go, you notice that it presses the platform down. And I can just see through the gap there where it's going to be. And I'll make a mark for one kilogram. Take it off, and it comes up. And that's my naught reading put it on and it goes back to pretty well the same position. So it is consistent. Now I've done all that already, so if I turn that round you can see my scale. There it is set to naught, put the kilogram weight on again and down it goes close to one. You can see the problem, wherever I put this weight I'm going to get a different reading because the weight's not always in the middle. So that's the next thing you need, a tin that is about the same size as the platform. And that means that it can't rattle around, it's always in the same place. When you put the weight in it's going to be consistent. So let's see how we go. It's calibrated, and I want about a kilogram's worth of bolts and nuts. Pour them in. Down it goes. And I guess a little bit more than that. Just keep on adding them, and there we are. That, for my purposes, is about right, a kilogram's worth. Well, let's give it a check. Take it off there, remove these things, and we'll try it against a kilogram on the really accurate measure. There we are, nuts and bolts there and one kilogram on the other side. Hmm, just a little light, but that'll solve it. One bolt away. So it's rough, but it's effective, and it does keep sand out of the food.